show you how to change Cinemachine values dynamically, so this includes adding the actual Cinemachine brain and virtual camera dynamically, as well as changing any of the properties on the cameras itself, so this can include the look at and target property, adding a specific component, so for example adding a composer or transposer via code, and changing any of its properties. You can use this if you don't want to use the inspector, or if you just have some dynamic mechanic or interaction that needs to be through code. And so you can see in this scene, I've dynamically imported a Cinemachine brain and camera, and through code, I've assigned the look at and follow property to an empty game object, which is rotating around the scene, and I've also adjusted some values through code. And so this wonderful scene was made with the Gaia Pro 2021 asset, which if you don't know is an amazing terrain and scene generator that can be used to create worlds in a matter of minutes. And so thanks to the amazing sponsor of this video, Unity, over 8,000 assets, including this one, will be on sale in the New Year sale. This sale starts on December 12th, 9pm PT, and ends January 8th, 11.59 PT. Now the sale features 50% off over all of those assets, which is amazing, and also features 30% off dozens of bundles. And so if you missed the Black Friday sale, or have just been wanting to get some new and amazing assets, then this is the perfect time to do it. A lot of assets that weren't on sale on Black Friday will be on sale, and there will also be assets on sale that haven't been on sale the entire year, which is amazing. So be sure to check out the sale, affiliate link is in the description which helps me out a lot, at no cost to you, and be sure to use the custom code SAMYAMNY22 at checkout so you can get an extra 10% off your order over $150. Alright, so let's get started with this video. So first you need to have Cinemachine installed, so go to Window Package Manager, up here go to Unity Registry, and scroll down until you find Cinemachine and just install this into your project. Alrighty, so I'm just going to go into my scripts folder here and let's create a new C-sharp script, right click create C-sharp script, and I'm going to show you how to dynamically add a Cinemachine virtual camera. And then I'm going to show you the same process for a free loop camera, which are the most commonly used ones. So I'm just going to call this Cinemachine Virtual Dynamic. You can just double click that. So I'm just going to remove these two using statements and also these functions. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do is import the using Cinemachine namespace. So using Cinemachine, and this is so we can use the libraries for Cinemachine within this class. So we want to make a Cinemachine virtual camera, so we can just do a private Cinemachine virtual camera, and we're going to assign this soon. And we can just have an awake function. And so for our virtual cameras, we need to make sure the main camera has a Cinemachine brain component attached. The brain is what basically communicates between the virtual camera and the actual camera. So it takes in the virtual camera information and relays it to the main camera and tells the main camera how it should move and rotate. It also pays attention to the priority between cameras to switch between cameras if one priority gets higher than another. So first we can check if we already have this component attached to our main camera. Be sure your camera has the main camera tag attached to it or else it won't recognize the camera.main. So we can do camera.main game object try get component of type cinemachine brain and in this parentheses we can do out bar brain and so this will output a variable called brain that we can check if it's null. So if brain is null, so if there is no cinemachine brain component attached, then we can just add one. Camera.main.gameObject.addComponent Cinemachine Brain And we can just equal that to the brain. Going to add some curly braces here. Alright, so now that we have a reference to our Cinemachine Brain, you can change some of the properties. So for example, you can do Brain.DefaultBlend So this controls the blending behavior between different cameras, if you switch between cameras. And for example, you can set the time between the blends. So if you wanted to, you can set the time to one second. That's how long it takes to switch from one camera to another. And so I won't be going over all of the properties. You can find them here in the Cinemachine Brain class. All of these are member variables. That's why they have the M in front of them. And you can change them to whatever you like. You just get their reference and equal them to the value that you want. So this link will be in the description along with all the other documentation links. And just to show another one, for example, you can do brain show debug text and set that to true if you want to see the debug text. All right, so now we have to get a reference to our Cinemachine virtual camera, which if you already have a camera attached, you can just do a get component, or if you don't, you can do an add component. So in this case, I'm just going to do Cinemachine virtual camera equals game object, which is this game object, dot add component and of type Cinemachine virtual camera. 
If you already did have the component and you're using get component, you can also just do this require component type of Cinemachine virtual camera, just as a safety measure to make sure that whatever game object the script is attached to has to have a Cinemachine virtual camera attached to it or else it won't work. This is if you use get component though, not add component because add component assumes that there is no virtual camera component already attached. Now that we have a reference to the Cinemachine virtual camera, we can already start to change some of the properties. So for example, you can do Cinemachine virtual camera dot follow. So this is the game object transform it will follow. And I'm just going to call this focus object transform, which we will set that right now. So up here, we can do a serialize field and do private transform focus object transform. And you can also set the Cinemachine virtual camera dot look at property. So this will aim the camera towards your focus object transform. Pretty neat. And you can also set the priority here. So Cinemachine virtual camera priority. Let's say we just want it to have a priority of one. So the priority basically determines what Cinemachine virtual camera takes precedence. So if you have multiple Cinemachine virtual cameras, the one with the highest priority will be shown. And if a camera of lower priority gets a higher priority than the current camera, the Cinemachine brain will switch over to the new camera with the higher priority. And I have a whole video on this on how to do this. This isn't the only way. There's also the state driven camera that you can use for this. Link in description. Alrighty. And once again, if you want all of the things that you can access, there is the documentation page, which you can see the M variables, the member variables, you can change these properties and you can actually change it directly like M follow. But I just like this look better personally. All right. So now that we changed some of those properties, now is the interesting part. So just to show you how Cinemachine works, if we create a virtual camera, you see that we have the follow and look at property. And then we have different sections here. The main ones are body and aim. So this section is more geared for movement. And this section, the aim section is for aiming towards an object or rotating the camera. And this one is more for changing the position of a camera, the body. So you see under the body, we have different Cinemachine components that we can add. So each one of these is a separate component and you can add or remove Cinemachine components dynamically through code. So let's say we wanted to add a transposer through our code, which the transposer basically moves the Cinemachine camera to where the player is. And you can also add an offset to the player. So follow offset as well as damping, which the damping basically determines how hard the camera tries to keep up with the follow offset. And you can hover over these and see more detailed explanation. So small numbers are more responsive and large numbers take their time getting to the follow offset of the player. So basically the higher the value, the slower it will get to the offset. So this is the very important part. So you can do Cinemachine virtual camera dot add Cinemachine component. And a lot of people don't know about this because it's kind of hidden. And so then you can add, for example, a Cinemachine transposer here. And you can equal this to Cinemachine transposer, call this transposer. And you can also do the same with the aim. So the aim one, let's add a Cinemachine composer, aim it composer. And you can do Cinemachine virtual camera dot add Cinemachine component, Cinemachine composer. And if you already have the component added, instead of using add component, you can use get component, or you can use destroy Cinemachine component if you wanted to destroy it. All right, so now once you have the reference to the Cinemachine component, you can do anything you want with the properties. Once again, the documentation will be in the description and you can change all of these member variables, the bias, the camera distance, dead zone, look ahead, etc. So as an example, you can do transposer dot and in the member variables, let's just add a follow offset of new vector three, zero, zero, and we can do negative 20. And this will be 20 meters away from the player in the negative forward direction of the player. And with the composer, it's the same thing. You can do composer. And let's say we wanted to change the screen X and screen Y, which just adds an offset on the X direction for centering the target. So let's say we want that offset to be 0.30 F. And let's say we want the offset for the M screen Y to be negative 0.11 F. So yeah, you can change any of the variables here. And once again, screen X and screen Y is the screen position for the center of the dead zone and the camera rotates so that the target appears here. And if you find it easier, you can add an empty Cinemachine component to your scene, add a dummy player object, assign the follow and look at property, 
And then you can kind of adjust these values here so you can get a better idea of how it will look instead of just freehanding it in the code. So you see the screen X kind of rotates the camera on the X and the screen Y does it on the Y. All right, so that's the basics of the virtual camera. Now I just wanna show you the free look camera because it is a little different. So I'm gonna create a new C Sharp script called Cinemachine Free Look Dynamic. So with the Cinemachine Free Look camera here, you'll see that a lot of people use this for third person characters because it has three rigs. So you see it has a top, middle, and bottom rig. And if you find it easier, you can enable game window guides so that you can see how your properties are affecting the window of the camera. And you can also enable save during play if you want these variables to be saved during play if you change any of them. So it's easy to edit. So for example, if I assign the follow and look at property, these are the game window guides, by the way. The dot is the center of the camera and the dot will not be able to pass into the red areas here. But if you look in the scene, you'll see there are three rigs and the camera will move along this spline here towards the top, middle, or bottom rig, depending on the aim of the camera. So you can see you can change the spline curvature here, which is how curved it is. You can change the height of the rigs and the radius of the rigs. And it takes in the mouse input to determine where the camera should be on the spline. And quick mention, if you are using the new input system, this will not work. You will need to add a Cinemachine input provider to your VCAM and change the input action reference, which are your actions, your controls, to replace this mouse X and mouse Y. See the mouse X and mouse Y disappeared, which you can do by doing create input actions, call this player controls as an example, adding an action map, adding an action, setting the action to type value or pass through and vector two, since the mouse moves in two dimensions, X and Y. And I'm just doing this quickly under the binding, you can use mouse delta, or if you're using a controller, you can use gamepad left or right stick. And you can save this asset, and I also have a video on this. Then here you can assign your new action and it will replace the old mouse X and Y. So that's an overview of the free look camera difference. So now I'm just gonna open up this script and remove these using statements and extra stuff. And we can just do using Cinemachine as usual. And I'm just actually gonna copy the code from here since it's gonna be mostly similar. So here we get the brain component and see if it exists. But instead of Cinemachine virtual camera, you do Cinemachine free look and replace it here. And I'm also gonna replace the name Cinemachine free look. All right, so once you have a reference to your free look camera, as usual, you can change the free look follow to our focus object, the free look look at to our focus object. You can also change the priority. Let's put it at two. And you can also change the spline curvature here as well. Now the important difference I wanted to show you are getting the rigs. So each rig is a separate virtual camera, which is pretty interesting. So you can do Cinemachine virtual camera, top rig if you wanted the top one. And then you do Cinemachine free look dot get rig and the index of the rig. So for example, the index of the top rig is zero and there are only three rigs. There will always be three rigs. So you can duplicate that. You can call this middle rig, duplicate that, call this bottom rig. The middle rig has an index of one and the bottom rig has an index of two. So you see this is a Cinemachine virtual camera. So this is kind of the same thing as we did here. You can change all the properties as you want. Top rig, dot, and then you have the priority, the follow, but you can do add Cinemachine component, add a transposer, etc. Other thing I wanted to show you was changing the noise of Cinemachine. So you see that in the Cinemachine cameras, if you scroll to the bottom, you have this noise, which kind of adds a sway to the camera. And it has some profiles that you can use pre-made, which is pretty nice. So to do that, we can just get a reference to one of our virtual cameras and add a Cinemachine basic multi-channel Perlin component. So let's say we wanted to add it to the top rig. Then we can do add Cinemachine component, similar to the other ones, and just put a Cinemachine basic multi-channel Perlin and then we can just assign this to a variable to get a reference to it. And we can call this noise. So now we can change the parameters. So you can do noise dot M amplitude gain. So this is how much you want it to move. So one is a normal value. If you don't want it to move at all, you can just put it at zero. You can maybe do 1.5 here. And then you can do noise dot M frequency gain, which is how fast you want it to move. One is the normal value. If you put it to a higher number, it will move around faster randomly. So you can put it at two, for example. You can also add extensions here. 
So there's different extensions, a collider, third person aim, confiner, confine it to a certain area. If you did want to add extensions through code, it's pretty simple. It's just like adding a component to a game object. So if you wanted to add a Cinemachine Collider, you can do Cinemachine Collider. And we can just call that Cinemachine Collider. So we can just do game object dot add component of type Cinemachine Collider. And then now that we have the reference, we can just do Cinemachine Collider dot and then we can access any of the member variables here. So if we wanted to change the damping, we can just equal it to whatever value we want. So those are the basics of changing Cinemachine through code. You can also make a custom extension, but that's a little out of scope for this video. I did cover it a bit in one of my videos previously, the first person controller, which I will link down below. But this was before I knew about the input provider. And basically what you can do is extend the Cinemachine extension and override this function called post pipeline stage callback, which this is called after Cinemachine does all its fancy work. Here you can basically change anything you want about the Cinemachine position or rotation. And you can see the class here, Cinemachine extension. Here are all the things that you can call or change. So that's just to give you an idea of a Cinemachine extension. And if you did want to change how the input is handled, for example, you can just open up their input provider and you'll see all they're doing is taking a reference to the input action reference. And all they're doing is implementing this interface input access provider and implementing this get access value, which returns our actions X and Y. So you can actually do something similar to this and input any X and Y that you want into the free look camera. So yeah, I hope you found that useful and enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. Helps me out a lot. And once again, I want to thank the wonderful sponsor of this video, Unity. And be sure to check out the sale. Affiliate link and coupon code is in the description. It's going to be awesome. And I also want to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. And it helps me personally and with my channel. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access to videos, exclusive tutorials, exclusive Discord chat, and more. And so with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the enthusiastic tier, we have One Time, Elliot, Matthias, Heather, Kim Chun Young, Burch, Doug, Moritz, Cinnamon Roll Studios, Mario, Trident, Capra Robotics, Zach, Matthias, Drew, Chris, Carl, and Joshi. Thank you so much for all of the support. I really appreciate it. And in the dedicated tier, we have Nils. Thank you so much for your support. It's really appreciated. And thank you to all my patrons. Once again, if you're interested, the link is in the description. We also have a Discord channel you can join where you can chat, post memes, or ask for help. So once again, be sure to subscribe and like this video. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.